In 247 BC, during the Warring States period, 13-year-old Yun Zhen became the king of the Qin state in northwest China. Nine years later, he took charge of state affairs. After 15 years, he unified the disintegrated country and established a centralized feudal regime. Considering himself surpassed all previous emperors in achievements, he called himself Shi Huang Di, meaning the first emperor. Thus, Qin Shi Huang, the first feudal emperor in Chinese history, came into existence. After unification, Qin Shi Huang established a system of centralized dictatorship with a complete pyramid bureaucracy from top to bottom. At the same time, he unified currency, weights and measures, and Chinese scripts, constructed a national network of roads and the Great War to resist northern invaders. During his lifetime, Qin Shi Huang left us brilliant accomplishments. After death, he left us a host of mysteries. The Great War and the buried terracotta armies are two great world wonders. Time has washed away the glories of Qin Shi Huang. Time has also unveiled the mysterious Qin Shi Huang mausoleum. Though the passage of time has reduced Qin Shi Huang's mausoleum to mere mounds of yellow earth, archaeological discoveries have brought another type of magnificence and brilliance to the world. In 1974, Yang Zhifa and Yang Yanxin, peasants of Lingtong County, Shanxi Province, were digging a well on the southern skirts of their village, which is located 1.5 kilometers east of Qin Shi Huang's mausoleum. Yang Zhifa, one of the finders of Qin figurines. 20 years ago, I was 37. A serious drought hit our place. The government ordered all production teams to find water for irrigation. My production team sent Yang Yan Xing and me to sink a well in the southwest part of our village. On the third day, when we had sunk one meter deep, we found red soil. It was very hard. When we sank about two meters deep, our pick struck upon the neck of a chin figuring. We poked our hand into the hole and felt that the figuring was well preserved. We thought it was a Buddha statue buried here by our ancestors. As Yang Zhifa and his fellow villagers continued digging, they found some pieces of baked clay and further on some broken limbs of pottery figurines. At the depth of 4.5 meters, they found brick-paved ground with bronze arrowheads and crossbows, as well as large fragments of pottery figurines. The news quickly spread to Xi'an and then to Beijing. The State Bureau of Cultural Relics immediately sent specialists to inspect the place. Soon, a grand underground legion of Qin dynasty, never recorded in history book, were unearthed.
Could it be that during more than 2,000 years, no one has ever discovered these caves of figurines covering an area of more than 10,000 square meters and buried only five meters deep? An old man in his 70s recalled that when he was still a teenager, his father had seen a monster of immense size when sinking a well. Such monsters appeared on rare occasions. Local peasants called them pottery grandpas. It's said that wherever these monsters appeared, the wells ran dry. Thinking that it was a devilish monster, his father hung it up and baked it in the sun. But the well remained dry. He smashed it into pieces with a club. Excavation of Vault No. 1 started in July 1974. In the following years, the state spent large sums of money on excavation, sorting out, and protection of Qin figurines. Vault No. 3 and No. 2 were successively excavated. An exhibition hall over Vault No. 1 was completed, followed by construction of exhibition halls over Vault No. 2 and 3. The unearthed Qin figurines shocked the country as well as the world. On September 23, 1978, French Premier Jacques Chirac visited the Vault No. 1 exhibition hall then under construction. Amazed by the 2,000-year-old Grand Underground Armies, he said, there are seven world wonders. It can be said that the Underground Armies of Qin Shi Huang is the eighth world wonder. A trip to China is not complete without seeing the buried Qin armies. Thereafter, Qing figurines are publicly recognized as the Eighth World Wonder. Ancient Chinese mausoleums are a treasure in cultural legacy of Chinese nation. From selection of site to layout and construction, they embody oriental philosophical concepts and humanist ideas. Qing Shi Huang's mausoleum lies against Mount Li Shan to its south and faces the Weihe River to its north. Imperial villas and resorts were built here even before the Qing Dynasty. With hot springs at the foot of Mount Li Shan, the place became valuable in terms of geomancy to ancient Chinese. Legend has it that one day when Qin Shi Huang visited Mount Li Shan, he met a beautiful goddess and flirted with her. The goddess was enraged and spit on his face. Immediately, Qin Shi Huang's body was covered with ulcers. Medical treatment was of no avail. Helpless, Qin Shi Huang begged the goddess to pardon him. The goddess instructed him to take a bath in the hot spring. Soon, the ulcers vanished. So in the eye of Qin Shi Huang, the place was an ideal burial site. From the day he was enthroned, he started constructing his mausoleum. He mobilized more than 700,000 laborers and spent 38 years to construct a grand mausoleum 150 meters tall and with an area of more than 56 square kilometers. Ancient Chinese thought that one's soul did not die with one's body. So they paid great attention to burials enabling the dead to enjoy the same things he enjoyed when alive. 
It was this thinking that motivated the construction of Qing Shi Huang's mausoleum. Yuan Zhongyi, curator of the Museum of Qing Figurines and expert on the study of Qing figurines. We have excavated vault number one, two, and three. This is vault number one, possessing about 6,000 terracotta figures and horses lined in a military formation. Vault number two has more than 1,300 terracotta figures and horses. They stand in rectangular battle array with chariots and cavalrymen alternating with chariots and foot soldiers. In addition, there is a formation of archers. Boat number three is comparatively smaller. It contains 70 pottery figures and horses. As the headquarters, it commands the troops in boat number one and two. The three vaults have altogether about 8,000 pottery figures and horses, forming a huge underground legion. Why Qin Shi Huang was buried with so many pottery figures and horses? It's because he was an emperor. He needed soldiers and horses to guard him after death. The three vaults form a unit on the eastern flank of Qin Shi Huang's mausoleum. They cover an area of more than 20,000 square meters. In addition to pottery chariots, horses, and soldiers, there are also a large number of actual weapons. Two bronze chariots were unearthed from the west flank of Qin Shi Huang mausoleum. Of its kind, they are the most complex in structure and biggest in size so far discovered in the 20th century. They are a vivid proof of the rigidly stratified writing system of the Qing dynasty. are made of water and clay baked in fire. 6,000 years ago, people of Banpo village in China already knew to improve and enrich their own life by using pottery wares, thus carrying forward human civilization a big step forward. From making pottery bowl, pottery jar, and other pottery daily utensils, to producing life-size Qing figurines and other artistic objects for decoration, China's pottery culture has reached its peak in technological and aesthetic levels. The sculptural art of Qing figurines has inherited the realistic tradition of ancient China. At the same time, it has made further developments in style and technique.
Grasping their characteristics and spiritual features, sculpture portrayed officers of different ranks and soldiers of different armed forces with distinctive faces and characters indicating their native places and nationalities. At a close look, the 8,000 terracotta soldiers were molded differently. Some look sedate and dignified, some lively and naive, with smooth eyebrows, while others are plump and broad-faced with easy-going expressions. Still others look sad and gloomy. Rich facial expressions have remedied the uniformity of mass sculptures. Artists were also meticulous about details. The run of hair buns and every single hair were painstakingly sculpted. The stitches on the soles of archers in kneeling positions were depicted just like they were in real life. Those on the tips and heels were thick, while in the middle of soles the stitches were thin. Pottery horses, too, were finely carved. In one of the pottery horses, one can even see such negligible small detail as six teeth showing that it was a horse in the prime of its life. Buried Qing figurines were originally colored by pigments extracted from minerals. As a result of underground pressure and corrosion over 2,000 years, the colors mostly peeled off after excavation. From remnants, one can still distinguish the original colors. The faces and hands were pink. Costumes, shoes and boots were black, light green, vermilion, blue, orange, yellow, white, purple and red. It can be well imagined. When the mausoleum was just completed, the vaults must be sparkling with beautiful colors. Qin figurines are fine works of ancient China's sculptural art. They were made through many processes including molding, sculpting, carving, sticking, pressing and cutting. After that, they were baked in kilts and painted with color. The life-size figurines were well proportioned and true to life. Their average height is 1.8 meters, while the tallest measures 2 meters and the lowest 1.72 meters. As proved by archaeological discoveries, pottery figurines had been produced before and after the Qin dynasty, but they were of smaller sizes. At the end of 1970s, figurines as big as chin figurines were produced in imitation. It took several manpower to spend several months to complete just one such figurine. Pottery horse of that size has not yet been produced so far. How these pottery figurines were made under very primeval conditions 2,000 years ago remains a mystery. Unearthed Qin pottery figurines are as hard as rock. With a light strike on their grayish-blue surfaces, they give out clear, sonorous sounds. Their superb and complex technology marks the maturity of Chinese pottery-making technique. However, the technological level of unearthed bronze weapons is more astonishing. These bronze swords are 90 centimeters long, sharp and gleaming like new ones. Chemical tests show that they consist of many rare metals. Their surfaces are covered with an oxidized layer of chromium salt. Their hardness is equivalent to that of carbon steel.
Bronze weapons, unurged from Chin Mausoleum, are cast mainly of bronze and tin. Hardness varies with uses. Oxidation treatment of chromium salt strengthens the weapon's power of resisting corrosion and rusting. This technique is a wonder in the world history of metallurgy. The three vaults excavated are built of timber and earth. The height from the bottom of vaults to the surface of ground ranges from four to eight meters. On the four sides of vaults are sloping doorways. There are partition walls surrounded with wooden columns over which are placed wooden boards topped with reed mats and lowers. The passages are paved with bricks it was in these passages that Qing figurines stand in military formations. According to verified information, there are altogether four underground vaults. Vault number one, which has been excavated and put in order, is 230 meters long and 62 meters wide, with a total area of more than 14,200 square meters. Rectangular in shape, vault number one has 20 sloping doorways, all blocked with planks. Between the doorways on the northern and the southern sides is a one meter wide passage running across the partition walls. Vault number two is located 70 meters to the eastern side of vault number one. Shaped like a zigzag ruler, it is 124 meters long, 90 meters wide, with a total area of 6,000 square meters. Its structure is more complicated. It has four parts. The first part protrudes from its eastern flank with a 3.7 meter wide corridor on its east and west sides. In the middle of the vault are six passages running from east to west. Their two ends are connected with the long corridors. The second part is its southern half there are eight passages with a two-meter wide beam running across them. The third and fourth parts are its central and northern half. Each has three passages. The four parts of vault number two are independent and at the same time interrelated, displaying the different functions and mutual relation of cavalrymen, chariots, and foot soldiers in battle. Vault number three is located 120 meters on the west flank of vault number two and 25 meters to the north of vault number one. It is 29 meters long and 25 meters wide with a total area of 520 square meters. It is concave shape. It consists of three parts, the northern and southern wings and the central part for chariots and horses. This is a typical layout of headquarters. Vault number four is an abandoned vault unearthed in 1974. It is said that because of a peasant uprising, Qin figurines which had not been installed were hurriedly buried. We believe that with the deepening of the study of Qing figurines, the mystery of vault number four will be unraveled.
Like a huge magnet, the excavated Qing figurines have attracted visitors from all over the world. According to incomplete statistics, the Museum of Qin Figurines has, since its opening, received more than 30 million visitors from home and abroad. Among them are 70 government heads, including former U.S. President Ronald Reagan, Queen Elizabeth II of Britain, French President Francis Wilhelm Mitterrand, and German Chancellor Helmut Kohl. Meanwhile, as an envoy of friendship, Qin figurines were exhibited in more than 30 countries and regions, including the United States, Britain, France, Germany, and Japan. The exhibitions aroused warm responses. The number of visitors exceeded 8 million. In December 1987, Qing Shi Huang Mausoleum, including Qing figurines, were put on the list of mankind's cultural legacy, under protection by the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization. <laughs>